so basically it was a complete shambles on this first day of running and the man who'll be smiling biggest I think at this point will be one Bernard Ecclestone who to his credit always stayed away from street races as much as he could he was never a fan of Monaco and he was never a fan of putting on new races as street circuits for a simple reason that you have a massive amount of local uh, outcry to overcome and beyond that it's very very difficult to get it right which was why Bernie in from 94 onwards post Senna uh, always looked at super circuits things he could control tracks that he could control there's a parallel of course between this Vegas and the Vegas of 81 which Morris Hamilton actually drew on Twitter and Morris just recovering from uh, a recent operation so we wish him well and that is that this the Vegas 81 was the first time Formula One had gone to a new track and not run a race prior to the event to ensure that the track was in in, in good shape. Uh, of course the difference between this Vegas and Vegas 81 is that in 81 it was held in a car park and therefore there was much more access, there was much more confined control of the circuit and the surface and of getting it right as distinct from being on the public roads where the public were allowed until three hours I understand before uh, practice was due to begin a la Monaco and that is the problem of course getting the track perfect in that situation which is why to come back to my original point why Bernie always stayed away whenever possible from street races now I can hear lots of voices in the background saying yeah but this is great for Formula One this is huge for the growth of Formula One in the United States to have a race in Vegas well I'm sorry, I wrote an article in F1 Racing at least 10 years ago now, if not longer, in which I said Formula One needs to expand in the United States, it needs to go to great cities, and I included Las Vegas in that. And my idea then, uh, and I put this to Formula One, was that, and I think at the time Steve Wynn was the major player at Vegas, no longer is of course, but he was building replicas of the Eiffel Tower and other, and the Egyptian pyramids and the Sphinx and so forth. And I said, what we should be doing is going to Vegas. They should be buying a massive tract of land in the nearby desert and building the American perfect replica of, let's say, the Nürburgring North Circuit. 15 mile lap, but perfectly safe with the jumps, with everything. And if you didn't want to do that, you could do the old spa or you could do an amalgamation of all three, bring Brands Hatch into it maybe. You could have built the ultimate Formula One racetrack on the outskirts of Vegas. And then in the town of Vegas, I suggested in the article, they should have a massive Hall of Fame, uh, Formula One Hall of Fame, and in addition to all that, to beat another drama I've always been beating, they should have ensured in the Concord Agreement that the top three drivers in the World Championship every year go to America and do at least a three to four week tour of the United States doing all the big chat shows, charity events, karting events, balls, whatever it is, just to promote Formula One. And I think that would have worked. And I think that we wouldn't be having the problems we have with Vegas today if they'd taken that route. And they could instead, they could be saying, wow, the world's greatest Formula One racetrack at a time when we have all the other things going on that Liberty Media are doing to, to take Formula One to a new visibility globally and certainly in the United States. So to that extent, I don't have much sympathy either because I think that would have been the right solution. And if that was the case, by now we would be celebrating this amazing US Grand Prix in Vegas over this old rendition of say the Nürburgring, which was agreed by amongst all the Formula One drivers whoever raced there, that it was the greatest track in the world. Not the, not the safest, of course, but that's what I'm saying. You know, Vegas could have done it safely in the middle of the desert. So that's one point. Secondly, um, I really take issue at Toto Wolff's reaction to the manhole cover thing, because he said, oh, it's only a manhole cover. We all have forgotten about it by Saturday. Move on. This is a great event, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm not sure Alpine, who lost a survival cell over the, over the manhole cover on Friday in those eight minutes that we ran, or indeed Ferrari with Carlos Sainz's car, also a survival cell, and the power unit completely destroyed. I'm not sure it should be written off as glibly as, oh, well, get a life. It's only a manhole cover. Uh, that's one point. Another point, manhole covers and things like that have been around before. So what is going on? Why was that not identified? I think it was Macau 84, might have been 85. I think it was Claudio Langes, the Italian driver, going up the hill after, uh, after turn two, had a manhole cover come up underneath his 
uh, I don't know, I guess it was a, a, a Dallara of some sort. Maybe, I, I think it was. Anyway, it tore the bottom out of the car. And he was actually injured in that, quite badly injured. And, and uh, you, that was one thing that we should have learnt from. Secondly, I recall all the it weren't manhole covers, but they were sort of storm grates in China when we first raced in Shanghai. So you would imagine things like manhole covers around Vegas when the, when the roads are open to the public, you would imagine they would have been absolutely on top of that instead of which they weren't. And that's, um, that to me is another example of why Bernie is correct in saying Formula One should stay away from street races wherever possible. And the next point I want to make is that the modern version of, of Monaco, of these street circuits taking a race to a city, is the Jeddah Vegas layout, all these long straights with a couple of corners. And this is where I think Max Verstappen is absolutely right. He's been obviously completely misquoted and all these quotes have been taken out of context because he said at one point it's 99% show, 1% race. Of course, um, what he really means by that, I think, is that it's a dumb circuit. There aren't many corners in which you can be a racing driver. It's just all straights. And that, of course, brings into focus another polarization in Formula One, which is Max, on the one hand, saying, I like getting on with the job and doing my job. I don't want to get involved with all this other stuff. It's completely over the top. And then you've got Lewis Hamilton saying, oh, no, I love it all. This is great for Formula One. It's growing the business. Everything's bigger and better. Well, I actually take Max's position here because, A, <laughs> you're looking at a guy who doesn't believe that necessarily big is better anyway and that we should be continually growing everything. That's the first thing. This is a cliche that's come into modern society that I think is actually quite detrimental in many ways. Rather than continuing to do things very well and honing and refining, we're under this constant pressure. Sell up, make it big, move on. Got to be good for the business. Grow. Grow has become a, a misused word, I think, in many ways. That's one point. Secondly, it brings into focus also where we're going with Formula One. And obviously, Liberty have taken the profile of Formula One to a completely new audience, which tends to want to watch things behind the scenes rather than the actual racing, which, of course, is a problem in terms of the real money comes in from the TV coverage of the actual racing. And then beyond that, what is a good show? Lewis Hamilton, on the one hand, is saying, oh, I'm sure Vegas will produce some good racing. Well, I'm sure it'll produce a lot of overtakes because it's got a lot of straights and we're using two DRS zones. On the other side of the coin, is it actually a great racing circuit for racing drivers? Uh, answer, no. There aren't many good corners there. There aren't any medium high-speed corners. It's all sort of twiddly bits adjoining long straights, as Max Verstappen said. And I totally sympathize with a racing driver taking that view. And I think all credit to Max as the world champion that he's prepared to say that against the mainstream. I think he's absolutely correct. And again, to come back to my point, I think this could have been done correctly if they'd built the ultimate circuit with great corners out in the desert somewhere where there's lots of room, where they could have had runoff area uh, and made it safe to 2023 standards and not cram it all into a public road set up which inevitably involves long straights because it's even more complicated trying to put in corners and barriers for corners. Having said that, I think there's a final issue that needs to be uh, highlighted, and that is the safety issue. As, as regular viewers of this channel will know, my big thing is how dangerous speed differential is. And I've always said that the straights are just as dangerous, potentially, as the corners on any given circuit, partly because they're such high speed and partly because we take the straights for granted and we very rarely build in any sort of runoff area on the straights. It's just assumed that the cars will be down the straight, nothing will happen. Well, as we, as we saw, what was it, just over a year ago now, Lance Stroll is quite capable. He's a Formula One driver, quite capable of driving into Fernando Alonso on the straight in Austin and causing a massive shunt. Luckily, nobody was injured on that occasion. But I would like everyone to cast their minds back to Melbourne 2001 when a marshal, Graham Beveridge, was killed uh, due to a contact on the straight between Ralph Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve. Uh, they were flat out. When Jacques hit the wall, he was absolutely flat out in top gear. And, and that was partly because Ralph had braked a bit earlier than he had on the previous lap and ran into the back of him. But it was an accident on the straight and a marshal was killed. And, and I still say, two cars touching on the straight above 300 kilometers an hour, you're looking at potentially an air aircraft type accident. And, and I hate this trend towards street circuits with long, long straights, big DRS zones, encouraging speed differential and nowhere to go if something goes wrong. And I think it's very wrong that we're going in that direction from a safety point of view.
Now, all of that needs to be said in the context of Formula One is full of very good people. And on the ground, they will get this Vegas Grand Prix up and running in some sort of fashion. And the business side of things, I guess, will settle down and the money possibly will be amortized over a 10 year period uh, because it's real estate that Liberty have also invested in in Vegas. But uh, they could have saved themselves a lot of trouble and they could have got the same net result, I think, if they just built a mega super circuit on the outskirts of the track and it would have been safer. As it is, I'm not a fan of this Vegas race. I'm not a fan of all the hoopla that goes before it. Here again, I mean, Bernie's view always was less is more. Don't expose them too much and they'll want more. Obviously, Liberties is completely the opposite end of the spectrum and you've got to respect that. But here's Max saying, nah, it's too much, you know, standing there like a, you know, a zombie on a, on a platform with a crowd shouting and screaming. He's had enough of it. And actually, you know, to me, the way Formula One has always done it in the past, and this is, I go back, I love garlands and I like driver's parades. And I like the odd cocktail party where the drivers are invited, maybe on behalf of the sponsors these days or the circuit organizer. But all this other stuff, it's so, what kind of, what is the word, demeaning? And it's a little bit childish, I think, given the stature of Formula One and how Formula One has evolved since the late 1800s. And, and I think it's over the top to me. And, I, and again, I applaud Max Verstappen for saying that because it's not an easy thing for somebody in his position to be against the mainstream and to be negative about Formula One. And yet he's doing it. And that's because he's just a pure racer, wants to go racing. Of course, he does his job PR wise and Red Bull do probably a better job than that than anybody else on the planet. And he fits in beautifully with that. But all this other stuff is kind of contrived. And I think Max has got a very good point there.